Inverse relations and functions create an equation or graphical way for us to undo what's being done. Anytime you're talking about inverses in mathematics, inverse relationships, inverse operations, inverse of addition or multiplication, you're looking at ways of undoing what's happened. So let's take a look at our beginning setup here. This is a mapping diagram. So in the relation we have negative 2, 3, 4, and 5 as our input values or our domain and our output or range values are 5, 6, and 7. So I'm going to map data from one to the other. Let's take the point negative 2, 6. Let's take 3, 5, 4, 6, and 5, 7. Now in order to make an inverse of this relationship, we're going to take our former domain values, the 5, 6, and 7, and those now become our range values. And then our former range values, negative 2, 3, 4, and 5, become our new domain. And we're going to map these back. So before we went from 3 to 5, now we're going to go from 5 to 3. We went from three. Um, negative 2 to 6, so I'll go from 6 to negative 2. We also went from 4 to 6, and we'll go from 6 to 4. I went from 5 to 7, so now I'll go from 7 to 5. You notice that originally our relationship was a function, but when we took its inverse, we no longer have a function because the our new input value of 6 has two different outputs, negative 2 and 4. In the table, how would this look? Well, we're going to start again with x and f of x, and the points lined up as you see them. Now when we go to do the inverse operation, we're going to end up with x and the inverse function of x. If you see the f with little negative 1 exponent, that means that's an inverse relationship. Or if you see a y and then y inverse, that's showing that these are inverse relationships. That negative 1 exponent does not mean to raise it to negative 1 power. It means it's an inverse. So we're going to run through our points. We'll have 1, negative 1, 3, 0, 5, 1, and 7, 2. You notice that our input and output values simply swaps location in order to go from the relationship or the function to its inverse. So let's take this and build on it a little bit. So here I have the function as denoted by the points given, and I'm going to plot these onto a graph. So I have the point negative 1, 6, 0, 2, 2, 1, and 3, 2. So it looks like this, almost looks like we have the start of what could be a parabola, although we don't have an exact uh, line of symmetry or symmetric areas built up let's take a look at what the inverse would be. So just like we did before, we're going to take our input and output values and trade them. So we'll have 6, negative 1, 2, 0, 1, 2, and 2, 3 as my points. All I did was I took my inputs and outputs and had them trade locations. So now plotting this graph, we have 6, negative 1, we have 2, 0, we have 1, 2, and we have 2, 3. <coughs> so here's how a graph and its inverse would look if we were to connect the points very lightly here. We get something that looks like that for our original, and then for our inverse, we're going to end up
looking about like that. It's a little bit off on one of those points. But you can see how the lines, in this case, cross over each other. They actually go through the process of reflecting across the line of y equals x, which is the identity graph. So all relations and their inverses when graphed will have a reflective property across the line y equals x. Now let's take a look at how we can go about writing an inverse operation, or taking an operation and writing as an inverse, either a function or a relationship. So here I have the equation y equals 2x minus 7. And I'm going to write its inverse. So to begin with, I'm going to take this function and I'm going to trade locations of x and y. So I'm going to make it x equals 2y minus 7. Now I'm going to go through the process of solving this equation for y. So that is beginning by adding 7 to each side. So I come out with x plus 7 equals 2 times y. Now I'm going to divide each side by 2. And with that I will come out with x plus 7 divided by 2 is equal to y. In reality we now have an inverse so this equals y inverse. If you want, you can go through and put that inverse all the way along for the y so you can see it. Now what happens if we start out with a something written in function notation? Your first step is going to be to replace f of x with y. So you have y equals 2x squared plus 3 and then go through the process as we had it before. We're going to say that x is equal to 2 times, again we're going to do y inverse squared plus 3 and now solve this for that y inverse. So our first step is to subtract 3 from each side giving us x minus 3 equal to 2 y inverse squared. Next step is to divide by 2. So this brings us out to x minus 3 over 2 equal to that y inverse squared. Now, solving this one last step for y inverse, I'm going to take the square root of both sides. So we have plus or minus the square root of x minus 3 halves being equal to our y inverse. So this you cannot really work with, can't have that irrational that uh, num denominator inside of our radical. So I'm going to swap this and rationalize the denominator. So of y inverse is equal to plus or minus 2x minus 6 inside of the radicand all over 2. And there we have our inverse relation. We started with the function on this one and ended with the relation. So not always will you start with a function and end with a function. There are special groups and categorizations that do allow you to start and end with a function. So if we have a function and we go to its inverse, let's graph this set with an actual function now. And we'll build on this idea of when we get a function and when we do not. So I'm going to start by swapping my items. I have x equals y inverse squared minus 2. So I have x plus 2 equals 
my y inverse squared. So y inverse is going to equal plus or minus the square root of x plus 2. Now going through and plotting my original graph, I had a y-intercept of negative 2. This is symmetric about the y-axis. And my y a value is 1, so we'll open up like so. All the way to the top here. So you end up with a parabola that looks like this as our original function. Now, if we were to go and graph the inverse operation, we have y inverse is plus or minus the square root of x plus 2. So, I'm going to, I started before at 0, negative 2, so I'm going to start at negative 2, 0 this time. I had the point negative 1, I'm sorry, 1, negative 1. So now, it's going to be negative 1, 1 and its symmetric point. Then I had 2, 2, so that will stay the same because it reversing my x and y values it is constant. And then I had 3, 7, so I'm going to go to 7, 3, and a symmetric point on the other side. So I end up with a graph that looks like this. Now this one is not A function because the red curve does not pass the vertical line test. You can see here that the two graphs are kind of reflections across the y equals x line. So when do we know that we have a function coming out from its inverse? Well there's a concept in math called one-to-one. -one. And what that says is that when we're dealing with functions, every input has a unique output. If we can reverse that and say that every output comes from only one input, meaning that if I have my group of inputs here, my group of outputs here, we go a single item each time with no, we don't get a second item coming into the first one. But what we actually need is for each input to have one output and reverse that have each output with only one input. Then you'll end up with a function where you came from. One last thing to look at. What happens when we compose functions and their inverses? Anytime that you start with the function and you go to compose its inverse, a very unique thing will happen. So let's find the inverse of this to begin with. Let's go y equals 4x plus 1. So x equals 4y inverse plus 1. Subtract 1 from each side. x minus 1 equals 4y inverse. And dividing by 4, you come out with y inverse equals x minus 1 over 4. So our inverse function, since this was a linear, it will have that one-to-one -one relationship, is x minus 1 over 4. So now let's go through the process of taking f and composing it with f inverse of x. Taking a step back to our previous lesson, this is going to equal 4 times a quantity of x minus one fourths plus one. Now going through and distributing, I come out with four times x minus one over four is just x minus one. Then we're going to add one to the end of that. We get x minus one plus one, which is simply x. Any time you compose a function with its inverse, you should come out with the value of x. So that means if you were asked f composed with f inverse of 7, 
running through this, 7 minus 1 is 6. 6 divided by 4 is 1 and a half. 1 and a half times 4 is 6 plus 1 is 7. So we will come out with the same value that we put in. Any time, any time that you do a, compose a function with its inverse, you will get out what you put into it. So functions and their inverses will be a stepping stone for us to go in into graphing, our, covering our last section of graphing radical functions. So study this and make sure you understand it.